Hey guys, Jeff here. We're back at the shed build. Today we're going to show you how to make a custom barn door, huh? Or how to install a storm door. It gives you a lot of versatility when it comes to your next shed build. I'm going to show you everything you need to know so that you can pick the right door for you. So the plan is to, to cut out a door here. We're going to be hanging a barn door that's wider than the hole. So just because I need to get access inside this room while I'm working. So I'm just going to set this up at around this height. I can adjust this later, but I just got to punch a few holes so I can connect the dots with a skill saw from the other side. Yeah, that works like a charm, right? There we are. And just for a point of reference so I can chalk line it. Well, this one's already on the line, so that's my reference. That's easy, but in here, I am going to run a chalk line down here. There, that's more like it. Right, so because I'm going to be cutting over my, above my head, I'm going to leave my sunglasses on. Safety squints aren't always the best option. And in this case, I think I'd rather have my, some protection from plywood scraps flying around. We'll just start as low as we can and we'll finish it off with the, uh, my handheld reciprocator saw. Ta-da! All right, so step one, guys, the reason that these are so cheap is because these panels, I have three different locations for a door in the shed. So I've got a great big 82 by 34, and then I've got a medium size and a small size door. So the medium size cutout I'm using to on the small size door. So after I'm done framing it out, it's wider than the hole. And then the large size cutout I use on the medium size door. Nice and simple. If you think ahead and from the beginning, you can get free materials like this to build your door, right? So then all we did is take some five quarter lumber, do the French saw technique, create some boards. We're gonna just measure and mark and cut. And we're gonna trim out the back side, and then we're gonna trim out the front side like an L shape so everything stays nice and square, all right? First measurement, of course. And, and I'm doing this really kind of rough cut lumber. We are not gonna go through any extremes. I have yet to pull out a miter saw on this entire shed build. And if you're just joining us now because you're watching how to make a barn door, trust me, you're going to want to watch this series from the beginning. So make sure you check out the link in the video description. All right. So this process is simple. I'm going to cut a piece, I'm going to screw it together, and I'm just going to eyeball measure all of this as I go around and trim this up. If you build it rustic, you don't need to be a rocket scientist and measure to the millionth of an inch. You can do everything very DIY and get a great result as long as intentionally rustic. <laughs> Now, you're going to see that um, the reason I'm building this on top of a piece of plywood is because it makes the backside flush, right? Because it's okay if the front is sticking out, but the backside has to be flush in order to operate like a barn door. And you'll see that by laminating this board to this board, you've got the grains going in opposite directions. It's the power of the, of the L. So this door can't warp because this wood wants to go in a direction without making this wood do that same thing. So, the likelihood that you're going to run into trouble is greatly reduced. And if you do, you can pop the door off and change out one of these boards at a later date and solve your problem. So, there you go. That's the door. Done. Don't bother caulking or wasting any time on this thing. It's an exterior door with exterior grade T111 siding and cedar. It's all going to get painted together so it has some durability. Now we've got to put together the hardware so that we can install this bad boy. <coughs> Ah, I picked this kit up uh, on Amazon and I did it intentionally because I know a lot of you are going to be shopping there. Let's face it, with the supply chain the way it is right now, 
expecting to find anything in a store. Good luck. Um, don't need the instructions, because I already did one of these already. Here we go. Got a lot of parts, okay? And God help us all. Really? Why, China? Why? <laughs> all the different fastener systems we have out there in the modern world. And we still put Allen keys in here. I was hoping it was just a fad. And one of these days I was going to go and start collecting them all and then grinding them off and make a little set for my drill. But I am way too busy. And honestly, at the end of my day, I'm not motivated enough to do that. All right. The weirdest thing about this kit is that the rail comes in two pieces and you have to join it together manually. All right. Where is the part? There it is. What I'm going to do, let me just cut all this out and I'll explain all the parts. And then I'm going to go and do my own measurements because they're going to be different for everybody. And then we'll show you guys how to, to assemble it and then install it, okay? First thing you need to know is these wheels, they have a, a locking mechanism. You install this again at the very end so that it doesn't pop off the bar, okay? The wheel can't pop off the bar, in theory. You got to loosen them in order to install them. Here, I'll show you. This one's nice and snug. You can't just walk up and get that on there, okay? It, don't, it won't fit. So just loosen these off, or you can take them off entirely and stick it on afterwards. But if it's heavy and you don't want to fuss around, you see, that'll work, okay? I won't lose the parts. Here's the part that goes and joins it all together. And uh, it's strange. And the only reason this works whoop, is because there are four mounting clips. So you're going to want to space out your mounting clips to be close to like within three inches of each end for both bars, okay? And everything installs in this little track in the bar. And that goes on the back side towards your wall, okay? And once you understand that, the rest of this almost makes a little bit of sense. It's pretty ingenious and it makes the box smaller and it saves on shipping costs. So they, I think they're translating that to you. I think this cost me $72 for stainless steel exterior grade hardware, and that was in Canadian funds. So if you're in the States, you're going to get a better deal. And here we go. I've got to loosen this up. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So it goes like this and like this. Like that is just seems nutty. Now you're not actually compressing the point of the screw into the metal, it's this whole plate gets compressed to the plate from the inside. So in the end of the day, it actually is pretty good. I was surprised when I first saw it coming out of the package for the first one. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This doesn't make any sense, but I'm not an engineer. So after I put it together and put it to the test, I was like, okay, I'll actually tell people about this hardware because it was pretty decent. Okay. <clears throat> Once you get it finger tight, you're going to want to actually Get that in there. <clears throat> Give it a good turn. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a little wonky. All right. Now these are loose. I slide these in position. One and two. Three and four. There we go. And then we've got the bumpers. Is that a big surprise to anyone? A bumper is almost a death of me here, buddy. And then there's a little end cap. I'm not sure why the end cap must just be decorative. All right. All right. There's got to be a better way to do that, eh? Isn't that something? That is Matt's line. He's like watching me build this yesterday going, what a piece of crap, eh? <laughs> That's why this is affordable. Okay, so here we go. We're going to just hold these things together and we're going to make this level. And when it's right on the money, I'm going to just take the marker whoop, 
and find that hole and make a mark so I can pre-drill. Well, now that we got this assembled, we're going to get this installed. And, and all I did was line this up earlier with a level and made some black dots here. Did a little bit of a pre-drill. And, <clears throat> okay, that's going to be interesting. Uh, this is going to be some tricky hardware to work with. Okay, there it is, right there. You're going to want to go to the store and buy yourselves one of these. This is a half inch hex head torque bit. That works for screwing directly into my lumber. Okay, beautiful. Now we're just going to get the door, mount our wheels, stick it on and put on the little bumpers. Whenever you're building something custom, always take the hardware out and then measure without it installed first. So we've got from the lead edge of this bracket when it's perpendicular, I have only got three quarters of clearance. So when I'm placing my bracket, I want to be mindful. Three quarters is too perfect, right? But I'm thinking half an inch would be nice. So let's let's just do that. Let's go half an inch back. All right. So we're going to just set that up half an inch back, and then eight and a half on center. Okay. That'll leave them in the interior space. So we have the ability to overcompensate. All right. To do that properly, I gotta lay this down so I can see what I'm doing. Okay? Yep. Okay. Hoi. Well, there we go. So all I've got left in that package is a little bracket. Just stick it on the ground, set the depth of the wall off of here. <laughs> this is one of these problems you can run in with hardware like this because it's all customized. This wheel is in a great location there. I knew I needed to cheat on that side because the kit comes with two rods that are joined in the middle. And so that opens up the space nicely. But over on this side, the bumper is so far away, I think I'm just going to have to reestablish this wheel right over here so that I get a nice permanent position for the door. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Listen, it's heavy enough, it's not gonna be moving around after you set it in place. That really is the key. If you put in a light door, the wind's gonna blow it around. But this one, I don't know. I think we're just gonna take it off the hinges, get it all painted, and then reinstall it, and we're finished. Cheers. So here's the deal. We went to the local building store, and I was gonna get just a regular you know, two by six frame or two by four frame man door put on my shit. So this is cut 34 wide for a 32 inch door because they have one inch jams. No problem. Got the right height, 82, everything's great. I get there, I can't find any of these doors. The only ones they've got available are like five or 600 bucks. And I'm like, gotta love supply chain. They can supply the expensive doors, but not the cheap ones. Yeah, so I decided I'm gonna just change my design. I'm gonna cap the whole inside of this hole with some cedar and we're gonna go and put a storm door right over top. So now that I'm working backwards, I've gotta open up the package, make sure what my outside parameters are for my, my, my door, and then I can frame this in properly. It's gonna take an extra couple minutes, but I think I saved $200, and this came with the door hardware, so then I saved 300 bucks. Not a bad gig. So basically what's going on here, hey, is uh, in most scenarios, you've got a door jam that comes with the door. And then this is designed to screw over top of it. So if that's my door jam, that's the height of my door now. I've got a gap. Not the end of the world because I can always install a cedar trim on framing this up. Just like we're going to do all the corners. So it'll look really natural. This is reversible. So we're going to go with a hinge on this side. So you come from the house, you come under the deck. You can open the door and go in. Makes sense? All right. We want to set it off the ground just a little bit so that we don't have any contact. It is a floating ground level deck, so over time it'd be nice to not have it destroying the ground. 
Um, yeah. There we go. In order to do that, I've got to cap this with cedar. I've got to cap this with cedar. I've got to put some framing in here and then install the door. This door runs just a little over 400, 450 with the handle. Okay. And generally speaking, it's a pretty simple build. And if you go into your construction project knowing you're going to need it, then you can pick it up earlier on and cut the hole to fit. Unfortunately, I have to make this change because they just aren't selling the doors that I want right now. And that always irritates me. And I'd rather make a modification than throw an extra couple hundred bucks in the garbage. Besides, so much more we can learn working together like this. So it'll be the same as my base trim later. Okay? So that if I have my frame for this door sticking out a little bit, and then I cap this corner, it'll all look a little bit more organic and natural more thought through you know I don't want to have it looking stupid Here's one of the advantages to building everything plumb and level. Even after my modification, it's still plumb. So I can actually hang the door right on this. This is gonna be my piece, right? And that is gonna look really fantastic. Totally please. Okay, we're gonna go with that. This is reversible, guys. I just lined up the hinge and found that this screw is in the perfect location for setting my hinge. Okay. <laughs> that means the first one's done for you. Sets the right height. Piece of cake. There's eight screws that don't have paint on them. It's for inside the hinge. The rest of them are painted because they're gonna be exposed. Now I'm just gonna line up my hinge marks. I'm gonna pre-drill just a little bit on all those spots because you know how much I have a love affair with Phillips screws. Mm. So many better options on the market. But if we're stuck with it, we're stuck with it. I need my other drill. Okay, we don't need much. I don't need much. I know I love you. Yeah, that's the right side. <laughs> Had myself going there for a second. Wouldn't be the first time, eh, Max? Okay. Hello. No. Okay, great. Now I'm making a mess, too. There's a couple of ways to get your first screw in. Um, I prefer to start high on purpose, just to make sure the door always fits. So, we're gonna maximize our space. Take this here and go clockwise, and then set my first screw over here. That gets my, my gap off the floor, okay? And then I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna pull this over as far as I can and go left-handed. Now I'm gonna check for level. And if I need to, I can make adjustments at the bottom screw. Two places you wanna check for plumb here. On the door itself at the hinge. Why even bother? Yeah. When you're that good. Like, <laughs> the screw on the one side of the hole. You start it out and you straighten it out and then you drive it home and it'll pull everything as tight as it can go. All right. So this door trim has this ridge here and it adds thickness for no reason at all. 
and it's making this a little bit more difficult than I wanted to. So because this wood's installed on a bit of an angle, and it's as far as I can pull it tight this way, without backing out these screws and shimming from the backside, what I am going to do is I'm going to take it like from this and this. I'm going to pivot the front. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of metal trim and twist it like that so then the door closes past this corner. <sighs> yeah, I just need a couple shims to get that done. Okay, that is pretty nice install if you ask me. Woohoo! All right, I'm just go like this. I'll grab my tools. All right. Awesome.